Due to Mendel's law of independent assortment, it is possible to produce new combinations of alleles in, um, in gametes during meiosis. And this process of making new combinations of alleles in gametes is called meiotic recombination. Let's say we have two gametes and the first gamete carries the big A and big B alleles there on separate chromosomes. The second gamete carries the little a and little b alleles. Now, if we carry out fertilization, this will result in a dihybrid individual who is big A, little a, and big B, little b. Let's further assume that this dihybrid individual undergoes meiosis. So what types of gametes can this individual produce? Well, they can produce big A, big B. They could produce little a, little b. However, they can also produce big A, little b, and little a, little a, big b. One notes that two of these new combinations are from the parents, namely big A, big B, and little a, little b, and therefore these first two are called parental genotypes. Whereas the process of meiosis has generated two new combinations and these new combinations not present in the parent or the parent uh, gametes are called recombinant genotypes. How do we detect recombinant genotypes? Let's say we had two pure breeding individuals. The first one is homozygous for the big A and the big B alleles. The second individual is homozygous for the little A and little B alleles so that they always produce gametes that are either big A, big B or little a, little b. And when we carry out fertilization, we will obtain a dihybrid individual who is big A, little a, and big B, little b. Now, when this individual produces their own gametes, they could end up producing recombinant gametes or allelic combinations that was not present in the parents. And our goal is to detect and measure what fraction of the gametes are recombinant or non-parental genotypes. Now, it's not really possible to look inside a gamete and see whether they have a big A or a big B um, uh, allele because genotypes are generally not observable. And so we must look at the observables or the phenotypes and one simple thing we can do is the test cross because when we cross to a homozygous recessive individual that reveals the genotypes of the other individual and so 
this dihybrid individual is going to produce the gametes big A, big B, and little a, little b. They will also produce the recombinant genotype big A, little b, and little a, big B. In this cross, we would fertilize these gametes of the dihybrid individual with the gametes produced by the homozygous recessive or the tester individual, but their gametes are all little a, little b. giving us the following genotypes. We could have big A, little a, and big B, little b. Little a, little a, and little b, little b. The third um, um, uh, gametic combination, allelic combination, which is recombinant, would produce uh, a progeny who is big A, little a, and little b, little b. And the next recombinant uh, gametic uh, genotype is going to produce little a, little a, big B, little b. The first of these progeny genotypes are going to have the dominant phenotypes for both the traits. And having observed that, we would know that this was produced, these progeny were produced by a parental um, uh, genotype or a gamete having a parental genotype because one of the parents is dominant for both traits. The second progeny genotype is recessive for both the traits. And having observed this, we know that this also must be a parental genotype because the other parent was recessive for both the traits. It is in the third one where we detect a dominant phenotype for one trait and a recessive phenotype for the other trait that we know that we have found a recombinant genotype since neither parent had a mixture of dominant and recessive phenotypes for the traits. And the last one will show a recessive phenotype for the first trait, but a dominant phenotype for the second trait, again revealing a recombinant genotype that was not in the present, uh, that was not present in the parents. Furthermore, we know due to um, Mendel's law of independent assortment and equal segregation that we will have a quarter of all of these um, um, uh, allelic combinations, all of these gametes, and therefore this test cross produces half parental and half recombinant. genotypes. Next, let us do an example problem in computing recombinant genotypes. 
a pure line of guinea pigs with genotype big A big A little b little b is crossed to an individual from a pure line little a little a big b big b so the gametes these individuals are going to produce are little a little a big b and big a little b and these are our parental genotypes after fertilization we will obtain a dihybrid individual who is big a little a and little b big b and the problem states that we are going to cross two of these individuals to each other and obtain the F2 progeny. The gametes these individuals produce are big A, little b, little a, big b, big A, big B, and little a, little b. And since the individuals have the same genotype, they will produce the same set of gametes. Now, in these gametes, the first two are parental genotypes. Whereas the other two are recombinant. Now, a quarter of uh, the gametes of the first individual are going to be big A, big B, and a quarter are going to be little a, little b, and therefore we will have a total of half recombinant genotypes from the first individual, recombinant gametes from the first individual, and we will similarly have a total of half um, gametes that are recombinant that have uh, non-parental genotypes, allelic combinations, from the second individual and the problem asks what proportion of the F2 individuals will be the result of a recombinant egg being fertilized by a recombinant sperm and therefore the egg must be one of these two genotypes and the sperm must be one of these two genotypes and we can utilize the product rule to determine the probability or the proportion of the F2 individuals that are recombinant and they're going to be a half times half is equal to a quarter.